Welcome to this short video on the forecast-based financing manual chapter Designing the Monitoring and Evaluation Plan, which covers a recommended approach for measuring the effectiveness and impact of anticipatory humanitarian action. This video addresses five guiding questions, which are how to set up a monitoring and evaluation plan for anticipatory action, what type of evidence we are actually looking for, how we best measure the impact of anticipatory actions, which tools are available also in the form of templates that you can customize for your own purposes, and how do we capture the learnings to improve anticipatory action. The preparation of monitoring and evaluation for anticipatory action unfolds in seven simple steps as they are described in the manual, but they can also be summarized as follows. First, we define indicators for the results that we expect to see and how they will be measured. Then we define responsibilities and timeframes for who will collect data on these indicators and who will analyze these and when. Then we summarize everything in an M&E plan and adapt and prepare the data collection tools so that we are ready in the event of an activation to implement the monitoring and evaluation plan using the tools and templates that we have already prepared. So any attempt at monitoring and evaluating the effects of anticipatory action starts with the definition of the expected results and how to measure them. A theory of change is a useful starting point for understanding and visualizing the causal linkages from actions to results. To develop a theory of change, we need a good understanding of the problem we're trying to solve and what causes it. In this hypothetical example, we're trying to prevent the outbreak of cholera in flood-affected communities, which is caused by flooding contaminating water sources and therefore people consuming contaminated water, leading to a cholera outbreak. Based on this understanding of the problem, we can arrive at a theory of change that aims to reduce the incidence of diarrheal diseases, i.e. cholera, in affected communities. In order to do so, households need to be able to purify their drinking water before consuming it. So we want them to have adequate access to water purification tablets or other means to purify water, as well as the right information to know how to use water purification means correctly. Therefore, our anticipatory actions need to get the water purification tabs as well as the information into the hands and minds of flood affected communities leaving us with this hierarchy of activities, outputs, outcome and impact results. Then for each result level in our theory of change, we can define indicators in the logical framework or log frame for measuring outputs, outcomes and impact. This is a hypothetical example of a logical framework or log frame that has already been populated, the link to which you can also find in the FBF manual. The log frame follows a simple structure. On the left, you have the results chain that defines impacts, outcomes, outputs, etc. To each level of result, you have one or more indicators defined, as well as the sources of data for these indicators and any assumptions or risks that we should be aware of in pursuit of these results. Now that we're clear about what are the results we want to measure, the question becomes, how do we measure them and what type of evidence do we need for this? Part of the anticipatory action narrative is that we want to act sooner than we would normally do. Therefore, simply monitoring the timeliness of our actions in relation to the forecast trigger as well as the peak impact of the hazard is very important, as well as keeping track of how many people are reached and with what type of outputs. Then, of course, we want to measure the outcomes in terms of protecting lives and livelihoods of people. And thirdly, going beyond the measurement of observable outcomes, we want to know whether the observable results are attributable or caused by the anticipatory actions. There are different strategies for causal attribution. And we have found that a counterfactual approach that means estimating what would have happened without anticipatory action 
tends to be a very practical method for most anticipatory action practitioners. This is a hypothetical example of what a counterfactual would look like for anticipatory action for fast onset hazards, such as floods or cyclones. The blue dot here represents anticipatory action beneficiaries at any given moment in time and we're plotting an outcome indicator such as dietary diversity or the health of family members. When the blue dot moves up, things are better. When the blue dot moves down, things get worse. Now let's see what happens to this beneficiary household um, when anticipatory action unfolds. So we have a, a forecast trigger that tells us a flood is coming, some time passes, anticipatory action is implemented, we have a flood or a cyclone occurring, then the regular post-shock response operations, and then we do a final survey. And if the dark blue dots were the only data points we had, anticipatory action would look like somewhat of a failure because it looks like we actually made beneficiaries worse off. This blue dot is lower than before. So what's missing from this picture, obviously, is what would have happened without anticipatory action. So here we are plotting a hypothetical case of non-beneficiaries who do not benefit from anticipatory action, but who also get the regular post-shock response. And in this case, let's say the anticipatory action was an unconditional cash transfer that enabled households to buy more or more nutritious food. And we see that it actually helped prevent the worst possible outcomes occurring which more of the non-beneficiaries experienced than the beneficiaries. So the difference between our beneficiaries and the comparison group of equally disaster affected people who did not benefit from anticipatory action but who received the same post-shock response constitutes the counterfactual, which could be measured immediately after the event. And one could imagine this being measured also in the medium to longer term to see if there are longer term knock-on effects of having provided this short-term anticipatory action assistance. This practical and widely used method to generate counterfactual data is also called a quasi-experimental approach. It requires data from beneficiaries and a comparison group of equally vulnerable and hazard-exposed people who didn't benefit from the anticipatory actions but who may have received the standard post-shock response as everyone else. It's considered practical because most organizations who do anticipatory action already have considerable experience collecting household level data and also can use their beneficiaries li beneficiary lists and targeting criteria for selecting survey respondents also from the comparison group. A word on ethical considerations. Assistance shouldn't be withheld from anyone for whom it is available. But because, unfortunately, funding for anticipatory action tends to be relatively limited, there will usually be people who are affected by an extreme weather event, but who cannot be reached by forecast-based assistance because funding isn't enough. They constitute a potential comparison group from whose experience we can learn to make anticipatory action better. If the beneficiary and comparison groups are comparable, then the logic goes that any differences between the groups after anticipatory action should be attributable to the forecast-based assistance, all else being equal. Now with clarity on what are the results we want to measure and how we want to go about measuring them, hopefully using a quasi-experimental approach with data from beneficiaries and the comparison group, we can define responsibilities and timelines regarding who should collect the data, when it should be collected, and who analyzes it. There it's important to bear in mind that we need to test the differences between beneficiaries and the comparison group for statistical significance. For example, we would want to know whether a lower cholera incidence among beneficiaries is really attributable to the anticipatory actions or whether it's simply due to chance or measurement error. That requires statistical testing. Therefore, we need to determine if we have the sufficient capacity for collecting and for analyzing data in-house. If that's not or not entirely the case, we do have terms of reference templates and examples provided online that are also linked in um, the FBF manual. 
for example, for bringing on board an academic institution to help us collect data or to bring on board a statistician to help with the data analysis. Finally, we can summarize everything in a m and &E plan, this populated example of which you can find online linked in the FBF manual. It takes the indicator definitions from the log frame or logical framework, spells out the definitions more clearly or specifically with numerators and denominators for all quantitative indicators with the later collection methods and sources for each of these indicators. So also describing for whom we want to collect this data from beneficiaries only or also from the comparison group, um, how often and when we would expect to collect this data and who is responsible uh, for doing so, as well as spelling out who is the intended audience or user of this information. Now, once the m and &E plan has been defined, is a good time to adapt and prepare the data collection tools to be ready for the event of an activation. Because once that time comes, it tends to be really too late and people are busy doing other things than worrying about developing questionnaires or monitoring forms. The FBF manual, this chapter on the M&E plan design, links to a number of templates that you can adapt and adopt for your purposes. For example, an implementation monitoring form that lets you track outputs or an outcome survey tool, which includes many thematic modules that you can customize depending on what your actions intend to achieve, as well as qualitative tools, which by all means we should use to complement the quantitative data um, to generate richer learning around the results that we want to observe. Having done all that will put us in a position to be ready in the event of an activation to monitor action implementation, that is to track our outputs, our reach and the timeliness of our actions and to plan for outcome data collection after the event immediately when it happens. That is, we want to collect and analyze outcome data using both the quantitative methods with the quasi-experimental approach just described, as well as qualitative methods to answer some of these why questions. And to ensure that evidence is used to generate learnings and to make improvements to the anticipatory action intervention, the manual also includes, and the toolbox that's attached to the manual, guidance for organizing, for example, lessons learned workshops that includes templates for um, agenda design, for discussion questions, for many things that will help us distill the findings from the evidence generation to make actionable improvements to the early action protocol and to our anticipatory action design. To conclude, here's a short overview of the toolbox that's included in the manual. The toolbox includes links to lots of templates to get you started. They include um, log frame templates and examples that you can customize, the same for the m &E plan, as well as terms of reference examples for various roles in monitoring and evaluation, and several data collection forms and examples that you can adapt and adopt. Lastly, on the website of the Anticipation Hub, the link to which is here, there is a section on exchange and in there, there are the working groups and the working group on monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning has a great section on related resources and further reading on the bottom of their page. And in there you have references to the latest resources and guidance, including a comprehensive separate manual on M&E of anticipatory action. And with that, thanks for following along.